The name of this video is Method of Images Charge. In fact, in this video, we intend to calculate, to compute exactly the surface charge distribution, a small sigma, on the surface, on the surface of a semi-infinite conducting slab in MEE facing a single point-like charge plus Q at a distance d half from it. So this is a special case of the, generical, the general case we investigated in the previous video, which was about the method of images dipole, and is the case where the surface we are going to consider is capital sigma A instead of the curved one, which was capital sigma B. So let us sketch this scenario here in 2D. So this is going to be here. Is the face of our semi-infinite slab, which is located in this regional space here on the right hand side. This is the face capital sigma a, capital sigma A, which is an equipotential surface as we have seen in the previous video. We will use a cylindrical coordinate system where the z-axis is this one, and eventually we'll continue it here to look at this problem from a different perspective. So here we're going to have a positive charge plus Q at a distance d half from the origin, which is right here. And there will be an image charge minus q at a distance d half from the origin as well. Okay? All right, let's do it a little bit further. This is an important sketch, it's worth doing it well. So this is the distance here, on the same distance, so this is the charge minus Q, plus Q minus Q, a dipole, as before. What are the field lines for a semi-infinite conducting slab in MEE facing plus Q in vacuum on the left-hand side? Well, those of a dipole, where we have an image charge minus Q at a, diff at a distance d half from capital sigma A. Therefore, we're going to have this field line, and here we can dot it, because on the side of the conductor, we can erase everything, as we know. So this is just to remind ourselves the field lines of the original dipole, which then we retro-engineer to be the field lines of an infinite, of semi-infinite slab in front of plus Q. So there will be then eventually a field line of this type, and here, Need to dot it, and so on and so forth. For example, this field line here, which eventually here come back here like that. Obviously, there is also a field line here going in this direction, which eventually comes in here. Perfect. This problem is symmetric, therefore I will not sketch the field lines on the uh, negative side of this axis here. Great. So now that we know all that, let's remind ourselves that this is a charge plus Q right there, and this is the image charge minus Q right here. Plus Q minus Q image charge. Now, let's uh, remind ourselves that the normal unit vector n, normal to the surface capital sigma A, is actually equal to minus uz with respect to the z-axis. The z-axis will point in this direction and we we'll finish this sketch in a minute, but let's not forget that. So this is our conductor gamma here. 
perfect. In MEE, this distance is d half. This distance is also d half to the image charge, as always. Then we want to uh, sketch. We want to find. We want to find the surface charge density sigma on capital sigma A. So we know that plus Q, because of total electrostatic induction, will induce it eventually a total charge minus Q, the image charge, in fact, that amount, on capital sigma A. But it will be distributed. Of course, the induction is larger at the minimum distance, which is around the origin. And so here there will be a high density negative charge accumulating in this region. It will be less dense here, less dense, and even less dense as we go further out away from the uh, charge plus Q, which induces minus Q. We want to find this distribution sigma at any point on capital sigma A. And so for instance, let us choose a point uh, here, let's call it uh, a capital P naught. So we want to find sigma at this generic point, capital P naught. And sigma is red because obviously it's a negative charge density as we expect it to be, at least we want, it has to be negative because obviously it's induced by means of a positive charge. All right. Okay, so now that we know all that, we uh, know that we can sketch using Coulomb's law. We have a charge plus Q. We want to find out the uh, field lines, the vector field E at this point, uh, capital P naught. And so obviously, from Coulomb's law, we know that the field has to go in this direction. All right. Generated by plus Q, the field generated by minus Q has to go also in this direction. Coulomb's law. Nothing more than that. All right. Great. And uh, uh, eventually, we know that the field due to plus Q will have a component, will be a vector field like this. So this we call it E vector due to plus. E plus is the field due to plus Q charge. Now, positive and a test charge there are positive, of course, it points out away, whereas negative it will point towards minus Q. And so we'll have the same magnitude because it's plus Q minus Q, so absolutely the same, the distance is the same. These two distances are exactly the same. So obviously the other field due to minus Q, the image charge is E minus, and it points towards minus Q, towards the image charge. So let us call this angle theta so that this angle here is also theta. And let us call this distance here small r. What is this small r? In order to understand that, let us continue our sketch. So this eventually will be our z-axis. So let me finish this sketch in this fashion here. So here I want to look now. This is a side view of the semi-infinite slab. Now I want to look at it from the front, from like this. So if I look at the face in semi-3D here, it will look something like this. So let's try to make it nice. Like this. This eventually continues to infinite, continues to infinite, and continues to infinite, continues to infinite, as always. This is an infinite plane, which is actually the phase of this lab. So this is capital sigma A, view uh, front view of capital sigma A, where we want to compute our sigma, small sigma at any point, capital P naught. And what is our point capital P naught? Let's say we continue this projection. So let's say that there's a point right here. This is my point capital P naught, which uh, if this is our z-axis in a cylindrical coordinate system, this is z, this is the origin. R will be, for example, this axis here. This 
this is the R axis, this is the origin O, the same as this origin, of the view from the front. And so now in this case, we need to sketch here. Let me sketch a circle, which is squeezed. You need to think that it's a circle, but since I'm doing a, a short, I'm shrinking down so it's not to scale on this, uh, in this direction. So the circle looks like an ellipse, but it's actually a circle. Let me do another circle. These are actually circles. Okay, so don't get confused by the fact that they look like ellipses. They're actually circles because I'm just shrinking it down here, all right, to make the, 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 the sketch a little bit more compact to save some space here to finish my calculation later on. All right, so now we have all we need, and the only thing we need to remind ourselves is what is the angle var phi? Of course, var phi starts from here, and this is our angle var phi. This quantity here, this quantity, let's call it dr, so this is an infinitesimal area, okay, which we will use to compute the total charge, which has to be eventually, when integrated, the total charge has to be minus q on the entire surface, because that's the image charge. So that's what we need to find as the induced charge by means of electrostatic induction. The origin replaced it, and I believe we have all we need at this point. We know that n is minus z because z points in this direction. You can, of course, choose z to point in the other direction. It doesn't matter. Now, I've chosen it this way, right hand rule for phi, for var phi, everything is consistent. Great. So, because of the symmetry of the problem, we also know that the tangent components uh, of this e plus n minus will cancel each other. Okay? So, now let's invoke Coulomb's theorem instead of Coulomb's law. So, here we just use Coulomb's law. Okay? We just sketch the vector fields. Now, because of Coulomb's theorem, we know that if we go in the limit, in the limit, P that goes to P naught, which is this point here, plus, what is P naught plus? P naught plus actually is on this side. So P naught plus is somewhere here. At the infinitesimal distance on the right hand side of capital sigma A, this actually means, if I want to do it with respect to this cylindrical coordinate system, that Z points to zero plus. So under these conditions, what we find is that uh, the tangent and normal components of E, of the total field E, which is the total field acting inside the conductor, at this point P in the limit, so this point P is in the limit to P naught plus or zero, zero minus if you look with respect to this coordinate system, this is equal to the total normal component of P equals zero. And why is that? Because we have a conductor in MEE. So since this means we are within capital gamma, within the conductor in ME, it has to be that all these electric fields have to be zero in the plus limit. What about uh, P that goes to P naught minus? So this means that Z goes to zero minus. Incidentally, note that none of the calculation we're going to compute here, to do here, will depend on Z, so this limit is uh, basically, just to remind ourselves that we are actually using a Coulomb's theorem, which is in the limit, okay? But actually, they will not enter these limits effectively in the calculation because, again, it will be independent from a z, okay? So this is a question which I've been asked many times before, so I'm making, I'm making it clear right here, right now. So in this case, well, we are looking at this side. As it so happens, we can split the tangent components of e, uh, of e as e plus t, and clearly, E plus T is this component here. Now we are on P naught minus. So this will be a P naught minus somewhere here. Okay. So under these conditions, E plus, which is the field due to the plus Q at P naught, but on the left, tangent component, clearly, let me skip the P. We know that this at point P is equal to minus, because of symmetries, the tangent component of the minus charge at that point, okay? Which means the tangent components on the, slightly on the left, in front of sigma A, but on the left, they cancel each other, which means, makes sense, because we know that if ET has to be zero within the conductor, as it has to be, also in front of it, it has to be zero. Otherwise, uh, case two of the Maxwell's equations, which is nothing but Coulomb's theorem for conductors, would not be valid. So this one, it's a check. So we are happy with that. The other thing we know, 
which is what we really want to use now, what is the normal component? So the normal component of, let's say, E plus, let's begin always with plus. So E plus, the normal component plus of E, how do we compute this in this case? Well, we need to take the E plus field, which is a vector, which is exactly this vector here, and dot it with n, with respect to this coordinate system, which is uh, the coordinate system O, R, var, phi, z. So we need to remember that this n is actually minus z with respect to that coordinate system. This is a typical mistake people do. So let's remind ourselves that that's the case, okay? Now, before continuing, let's also write down here what is the cosine of theta. So the cosine of theta, it's nothing but r, which is also this quantity here. Um, so we are doing the cosine of this angle. So it has to be, uh, it has to be sorry, d half divided by the distance. Okay, so it's d half. divided by this distance, which is nothing but the square root of d half square on the Pythagorean theorem plus r square under square root. This is the cosine of theta. Great. Now, with all this information, we can continue our calculation here for sigma. So how do we proceed? Well, the next thing we notice is that uh, E minus n, okay, which is uh, uh, in, uh, let's get rid of this vector because we already projected it. So after projection, clearly E minus n is equal exactly to E plus n because of the symmetries. Because of the symmetries clearly the n components are exactly the same, so they, su they sum up. And how do we compute this again? Well, let's do it for once. So we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, as always. So we are looking at E plus and we want to project it, okay? So it's 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, the charge that generates it, which is Q, divided by what? Coulomb's law, this uh, distance square, d half quantity square plus r square under square root of square remains like this power of one and so the source charge is plus q so this is what we have from coulomb's law one over four pi epsilon naught the source charge times the test charge which we don't put divided by the distance square coulomb's law this goes in the direction of the vector r that goes from uh, q1 to p if we call this point where the charge plus q is located as always the source point capital q1 and this eventually would be the source point capital q2 as always if we do so this we need to dot it times n but n with respect to the coordinate system is minus uz and what this product gives us is the cosine of theta with the signs already properly established okay so this cosine of theta, we know it, so we can eventually rewrite this uh, total normal field as two times the plus n, plus n is equal to minus n, so I need to double it. It's basically I'm doing this component plus another equal component, right? One plus two, that's what we get, that's what two e plus n. So this quantity, now is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. We know that what this gives us is the cosine of theta, which is nothing but d alpha over this quantity power of 1 half. So 1 half is 0 0.5 plus 1 is 1 1.5 is the usual 3 half. So we end up having q times d half, but times 2, so it's q times d half because of the cosine of theta, but times 2 is just qd, divided by the usual capital D half power of 2 plus r square power of 1.5, which is 3 half. And again, the sign, it's minus because we have a minus uz. So it's minus qd over 4 pi epsilon naught 
the half square plus half square power of three half, where this comes from the cosine of theta, which is we wrote down here, and we should not forget this minus sign, which is important because of course in the end sigma has to be negative. So we're right on the right track, it has to be a negative quantity, the rest is all positive, so it has to be minus. Great, and we double it exactly in this fashion here. So this is En total due to the plus and minus charges. All right, so now that we have that in hand, the next thing we want to do, if we have the normal component of En, we need to do in this limit, the limit doesn't really matter because we don't have Z, so we need to use Coulomb's theorem, and Coulomb's theorem tells us that, according to Coulomb's theorem, we should remember that in this limit, for P that goes uh, uh, to P naught minus, which is, if you want, Z that goes to zero, um, obviously here it is minus, This is plus, this obviously is minus, sorry about that. Okay, so this is minus. So in this limit, which is that, Coulomb's theorem tells, uh, tells us that um, En at P is equal to sigma right at P naught divided by epsilon naught, which means in order to find sigma, we need to multiply times epsilon naught this quantity, which finally gives us sigma at point P naught a negative quantity, which is given by minus QD, I multiply times epsilon naught, so I get rid of that, so it's minus QD divided by 4 pi D half quantity square plus R quantity square power of 3 half. This is our surface charge density, which as expected Hatted is a negative quantity, which is great. Okay, so we want it to be negative. So we found this sigma. Now, obviously, you can see that when r uh, is zero, which means we are at the smallest distance, we get the biggest density, the larger the r, the smaller the density of the charge. So it gets more and more sparse the further away I go from plus q, which is consistent with our intuition, with the qualitative understanding that we had already of this problem. Now, is this enough? Well, I want to confirm that when I integrate it over the entire surface, I get minus q. So let's do that. So how do we proceed to do that? Let's do it down here. We need to perform an integral. This you can do many different ways, but my favorite way is, again, to consider the integral of a plane, which is the infinite phase of this uh, semi-infinite lab, as a circle with infinite radius. Okay, that's why I sketched these circles here. Okay, so we know that the infinitesimal area of this uh, crown here is actually 2 pi r dr. I already integrated the, the 2 pi around the, the circle. Okay, so here we have a 2 pi, 2 pi dr, r dr, 2 pi r dr. So we need to integrate. And so what do we get? We need to integrate sigma. So the total charge that we get, q, on capital sigma A, which again has to be minus Q eventually. Okay, how do we get it? We are performing the integral of, let's take all the constants outside. So it's minus QD divided by four pi. This comes from sigma. Then I need to integrate the angle, which gives me two pi. So this is also a constant, integral from zero to, pi, to two pi of divided by five. And finally, we are left with the integral from zero to plus infinite in the r of uh, r divided by this quantity, which is function of r. Like this. Now, this integral is rather simple. In fact, this, of course, to the power of 3 half. This is nothing but the same quantity to the power of one half in the denominator, so minus one half. So in fact, if you consider the, this quantity, the power of minus one half, if I derive it, also including r, what do we get? We get minus one half, so I need to multiply times minus two. So this gives me minus one half, so I multiply minus two, so I erase this minus one half. And then minus one half minus one is minus three half, so we get exactly this integrand. And r squared derived is two r, so I need to divide it by two 
to get rid of that 2R, and I get just R in the numerator, so I get the integral. So this times minus QD, minus QD, uh, pi and pi cancel out, 2 and 4, this gives me a 2, so it's minus QD half. And uh, um, these two and these two also cancel out, and the signs cancel out. So here the sign we took into account, this we took into account, this we all have it. And now we are integrating this quantity here, which is 1 over square root, because it's power of minus 1 half, the integral, d half square plus r square, the whole quantity between 0 and plus infinite. So this quantity q at capital sigma a, therefore, is given by what? So if I do plus infinite, 1 over some quantity plus infinite square is 1 over infinite is 0. When I do 0, I pick up a minus sign. So the fact that these two signs cancel out, yet I pick another minus sign, because I'm doing minus the quantity at 0. So I obtain a minus qd half. And at zero, we get one over d half square under square root, which is one over d half, so it's two over d. Two and two cancel out, d and d cancel out, and this is exactly equal to minus q as expected. So we confirm that the total charge is minus q. So to summarize this video, what we're trying to do here, we are considering a semi-infinite slab of conducting material in MEE, which is this from the side. The bulk is all here on the right-hand side. There is vacuum with a single point like charge plus Q, the distance V half from this space. This charge plus Q, by means of total electrostatic induction, induces a charge minus Q on this space, which is distributed more densely close to plus Q and less densely away. That's the intuition. How do we solve this problem? Well, it's the same as by retroengineering that of a dipole where we have a minus q image charge at the distance d half. The field lines are exactly the same as the dipole, but we cancel them out, we erase them inside the conductor because they are in ME, the field has to be zero. So these are our field lines. We use this uh, cylindrical coordinate system. We make use of Coulomb's law to understand what kind of uh, electric field plus q generates and minus q generates at this point p naught on capital sigma A, which is an equipotential potential surface of this slab. Then we use Coulomb's theorem in particular, Coulomb's theorem approaching the surface from the left for the normal component, which is the only one that survives, allows us to find that this result here, where the tricky part is to remember we need to project along n in Coulomb's theorem, and n is minus yz in this coordinate system. This gives us also this dot product, the cosine of theta, which is written down here. So we obtain this field multiplied by epsilon naught. We obtain sigma, which is negative. Integrating sigma over this uh, a circle which eventually becomes infinitely large, which is the whole plane, gives us minus q, which is exactly what we expected from the uh, total electrostatic induction. In the next video, we are going to reuse this sketch, which I will not erase. We will find the electrostatic potential, the point P in space, capital P, as well as the force on plus q, as well as the force on minus q. And with that, we conclude our study of the method of images. That's it.